there, welcome back to Pepper Geek. In today's video, I'll discuss root-bound pepper plants. So root-bound plants are very common. So in this video, I'd like to discuss what root-bound plants are, why it's bad and why you should avoid it, why it happens in the first place, and if you do have a root-bound plant, how to diagnose it and help it recover. But before I get started, I'd like to say thank you for everyone who's gone over and followed us on Instagram. We just reached 5,000 followers on Instagram, so thank you. And if you haven't checked us out yet over on Instagram, that's where we post all sorts of pictures of our peppers and our plants. So if you're interested in seeing some exclusive content, things we don't post anywhere else, check us out at Pepper Geek on Instagram. Okay, so back to root-bound plants. I have three pepper plants beside me here at varying stages of root-boundness, and I'll show you the root systems of each of these plants. I've hand selected these because they were planted at different times and they are at different degrees of being root bound. So first, what is a root bound plant? Essentially, it's when your plant outgrows its growing container and the root system below begins to become entangled. The roots reach the edges of the pot and they have nowhere else to go, so they start to sort of twist and entangle around themselves and it can cause some major problems with your plants. Which leads me to the next point, why is it bad? Well, if you were to just leave these pepper plants in their containers, these are three and a half inch pots and this one over here is about a two and a half inch pot. The first issue you'll see is your plant will begin to flower. This one here is a perfect example. We have a bunch of flower buds starting up here and this is only about an eight inch tall plant. This plant in a large container would grow to be at least four or five feet tall. And here you can see it's already starting to fruit at less than a foot tall. And that's because it's root bound. When the root system no longer has anywhere to grow, the plant transitions into its fruiting stage. And that's why you start to see flower buds and we recommend picking off those flower buds to keep the plant focused on growing more foliage until you can transplant it outside into a larger pot or into an in-ground bed. Another common symptom that we see is curling leaves. Sometimes when your plant is root bound in a smaller container, you'll start to see the top leaves begin to curl. It doesn't always happen and we see it change based on the variety of pepper, but as the root systems become entangled, you see a commensurate response above ground on the foliage. Now, it's not the worst thing in the world to have your plants become root bound. We recommend planting in smaller containers if you want a smaller plant or you want to achieve harvests earlier on in the season. And there's nothing wrong with the plant becoming root bound in that case. As long as you're happy with the size of the plant that you're getting, having a root bound plant doesn't mean that plant is going to strangle itself and die. It just means that it won't grow any larger and you won't get as large of a harvest, especially if you're in containers like this. But there's nothing wrong with using a one or two gallon container for your peppers, but it is bad when they're still in their medium sized containers and you're planning to bring them outside. The most important steps you can take to avoid root bound plants like this is by planting at the right time and transplanting at the right time. So we have a video all about when to plant your pepper seeds. It really depends on your location and your particular climate. And then we have a video about transplanting peppers, when to move your seedlings into larger pots like this. And then again, when to move these into their final pot or outside. So if you miss the mark and the plants go an extra two, three weeks before you transplant them, they can become root bound. So let me show you what that looks like. Starting with the smallest plant here, this was planted about 10 weeks ago and it's still in this two and a half inch pot. So it is extremely root bound. As you can see, that root system is just totally entangled. The roots are going sideways instead of down and out as they would normally underground. They just sort of travel around the plant and especially at the bottom, you see them sort of becoming entangled. They just have nowhere left to go. So that's by far the most extreme case of root boundness and I'll show you a lesser degree, but definitely still slightly root bound. This plant was planted at the same time as this plant, but we did upsize it into three and a half inch pots, but nevertheless, it's still been 10 weeks and that's just too long. The roots definitely reached the bottom of this pot a long time ago and started to travel back up the soil, sort of searching for more places to grow. Lastly, I'll show you this fish pepper plant, which was planted at the right time and it's ready to go in the ground and we'll be transplanting it within the next couple of days. As you can see that root system is just reaching the bottom and it's not yet really begun to entangle around itself or travel back up. That is the perfect time to transplant your plant. You wanna get this into the ground or into a new pot so that those roots can just continue to grow seed seamlessly into more soil. So you have a root bound plant and you still want it to grow. So what can you do to help it recover? So there's really only two things that we recommend. The first is of course, transplanting the plants as soon as you can. 
If you're still working indoors, get them into a larger pot and just keep that indoors until you can move it outside or get them into a garden bed outside as soon as possible. And the other thing is while you're transplanting, you can sort of tease and loosen up the soil around the root system and try to get those roots to become untangled as much as possible without damaging the root system. You really don't wanna overhandle the root system as that can cause more damage than good. But a gentle massage of the root ball is a good thing if you have a root bond plant. There are also some special liquid fertilizers made for avoiding transplant shock, which can help encourage the root system to grow strong at the time of transplanting. We haven't tried those ourselves yet, but even just a light feeding of all-purpose fertilizer at the time of transplanting can help a root bond plant recover. One thing we have heard is that by using fabric pots instead of plastic pots like these, it can help avoid root bound plants because as the root systems reach the edge of the pots, they come in contact with air and they can air prune. In a plastic pot, they still have access to moisture and they just continue to grow back into the soil instead of air pruning. We have large fabric pots this year, as you've seen, but we've never tested smaller fabric pots. So maybe next year we can try those out and see if it helps with root bound plants. So you may be asking, why do we have all of these root bound plants? If we're the pepper geeks, why did we make these mistakes? Well, one of the reasons is that we want our plants to be mature in size, but we don't have room inside for 60 full size pot plants. And we want our plants to start to develop a woody stem. And that happens as your plants age, regardless of the pot size, you can end up with a pretty thick, woody, strong stem, even if your plant isn't growing any tall. The other reason is we simply planted a little bit too early again this year. We seem to get ahead of ourselves every year. We get a little too excited and we start to justify planting a little bit earlier than we really should. And we planted about 12 seed varieties on March 1st and the rest went in between the 15th and the 30th of March. If you're enjoying our content on Pepper Geek, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more. We're having the best time growing peppers and sharing our journey with you and helping you grow peppers as well. So thanks for subscribing. That's it for this video and I'll see you next time.